It's not a monsoon. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, my man. Do I have to tell you, you're somebody that I've been wanting to have on as a guest for, <laughs> for like almost since I started the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for coming here, dude. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is my first podcast. Yeah, ever. really? Yeah. Wow. And it's in English. It, <laughs> let's just add some extra challenges yeah. in there. But you know what, man? My favorite guests are generally the guests that bring beer. Yeah, and, and I did. You did. I did. So thank you so much for supplying the alcohol for today's epic adventure. Oh, oh you're yeah. a good man. I did light the lit lit uh, this. Thank you. You yeah. know I'm shredding, right, bro? Yeah. Is that why you got uh, it? Yeah, like, uh, me too. <laughs> yeah, the boys are gonna lean. Okay, we're gonna crack these into the microphone. Oh yeah. All right, fucking. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Skull, brother. Skull. Oh, oh. beer fun. Mm. Ah, that's good. Oh. Is that your first beer of the day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, nah, I've been yeah. drinking since <laughs> eleven. Yeah, it's my first. Yeah, no, yeah, I didn't have any. Uh, How many did you bring? Yeah, I br I brought four. Oh, perfect. To to uh, each. Yeah. So th I think that's uh, that's like uh, one hour uh, podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude. All right. Next, uh, you know what? I even have some more in the fridge in case it stretches okay. out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always come prepared. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what the fuck's been going on lately? You've been uh, busy. Yeah, I've been busy. I've been doing a lot of stand up. Good. Uh, and a lot of school. School? Yeah, I just came from school now. Yeah, okay. I study uh, I study film and uh, and television. Ah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you're going to be a film and television guy? Yes. Uh, I hope so. I, ho I hope to work in television. I specialize in television production. Yes. Uh, now. Yeah, okay. Because you also have acted in television series. Yes. Yeah, all right. right. So now you've got the in front of the camera part sorted out, and now you're figuring out behind the camera. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be able to like develop uh, shows and uh, yep. and direct and stuff. Well, if you ever need a fucking forty-three-year-old Australian guy to play like a werewolf or something, yeah. you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know where to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know, even know like you d you had your own production company. Yeah, dude, I've been in the game for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I just uh, I, like yesterday, I was like, uh, okay, I, I just googled you because I know I've seen like you have done some YouTube sketch uh, things. Mm. Then I saw like the short films you have made. And, did uh, you see them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which ones did you Cerebrium. watch? Cerebrium. Did you? Watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Did you watch all of it? Uh, yeah, I watched uh, Cerebrum. Yeah, the whole uh, the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, isn't that a trippy video? Yeah. Right. Fuck. I loved like the the shot where where the two ladies are making out uh, <laughs> behind you, and you're like coming up from the bottom. Just and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun making that. <laughs> I actually got financed to make that. Yeah, because like the fight scene and stuff, mm. it, it, it's beautifully shot. It, and, isn't it? Uh, executed, yeah. Yeah, it's done really well. Yeah. Uh, so that was when I was just like, okay, I want to get into film and video. Yeah. And then I just wrote a, you know, a bunch of applications and I, I fucking got that one funded to yeah. 75,000 kroners. Damn. I know. But wh wh where did you get funded? Is like it was like a, a bank or no? What? It was a uh, free fund uh, yeah. f f film film mm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was like right at the beginning of my. I had never done any video commercially okay. or anything like that. No, and I, I think I was still a student then. So I was yeah. just like, I had a bunch of friends that like, you guys want to make some videos? And we'd actually done a couple of smaller projects before. Okay. And then we're like, yeah, let's do this. And then we also got uh, equipment support from uh, um, an organization called Media Fabriken. Yeah. You know them? Yeah. A great I've resource. Yeah. Great resource. Like, so they supported us with uh, all, all the equipment and like uh, a lot of know-how and like trying to point us in the right direction with where we could find people. Yeah. So it was, it was a fantastic project. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd always wanted to make something sci-fi. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, uh, yeah, it was like, I, 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 I loved it. I, I, it had like the 2010 uh, vibe to it as well. Yeah, and right. That's, uh, I love that vibe. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. But, um, you know, th speaking of doing sketches, like yeah. uh, you're somebody, if I was ever going to do a sketch, I would love to do it with you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course. I. Uh, that's like, uh, that's where I had my like, that's my entrance into comedy is like sketches. Okay. Uh, and uh, at Vidrigon, I did like uh, the review, the school uh, rev uh, 
Review? What do you call it? You know, like a yeah, cabaret yeah. thing. It's like, like an end of year show performance kind of thing. Yeah, or? sort of. Uh, but it's like it's it's co it's sketches, it's comedy, and then it's like songs. Uh, but it's all comedy, and it's all songs. It's like a, it, it's like an episode of Saturday Night Live. Yes. Only like on stage. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was there, and I did really good there. And in like Oslo, it's like a huge thing. These school uh, shows. Yeah. Like. Uh, People uh, people uh, do a lot of work to get get it done, and uh, it's like a huge um, get like huge uh, status from uh, being in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I was not in Oslo; I was in Lillestrøm, which is outside of Oslo, so yeah. I didn't get that much status. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was still fun. Yeah. Zero status, good times. Yeah. Humble, Shit. still yeah. humble, H humble status. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you know the review thing. It's not really, from what I remember, it's not like a big thing in Australia, and I never. No really encountered until i came to norway and then like everybody that i know that's into performance whether it's musical like they all doing reviews yeah and i was like oh shit this is like a whole genre of entertainment for mm. high school kids yeah shit was it funny was yours good uh it was it was really good we had like uh because uh, you, you what you do is you um invite outside people who are older mm. and more experienced with comedy to come uh, and be the directors of the show. Wow, perfect. Yeah, uh, and they uh, put an ensemble together and they teach you like the basic like acting stuff. Yep. And then they uh, write the sketches uh, with you. Perfect. Uh, and you, you make it. And we had a really good uh, directors uh, yep. the year I was uh, in the review. Okay, yeah. that's good. So you, you did the review. You had a great time doing it. Yeah. Loved doing it. And then you thought, fuck it, stand-up comedy? Uh, yeah, uh, kind of, sort of, but not in that order. I, I, I mean, I, like, uh, my, uh, my love for comedy started, like, when I was a little kid because yeah. I had older brothers who were twins and they were nine years older than me. Mm. And they always watched uh, comedy. Like, uh, uh, they always watched, like, the... The classical Norwegian stuff like Burislage and uh, all everything Espen Ekpo did uh, and uh, stuff. So I would watch it together with them. They would be laughing. Mm. I would be laughing too, but I wouldn't understand <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> so I like thrived to understand it and uh, I, I like really worked hard so I also could be on in on the con conversation about it yeah, with my okay. brothers. Yeah. And did your brothers end up getting into comedy or performance as well? No. They both work in kindergarten now but ah. but they they still are like they are they are the most they are they are the funniest people I I know. Yeah. 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 Well, you're one of the funniest people I know. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and it, it, and it's true. And I know that, like, I remember the first time I saw you perform, I think it was at Salt. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, who's this guy? Mm. What's, you know, okay, I haven't seen him before. This is like a new phase. And yeah. then you went on stage and fucking tore it up. Yeah. And you have such a, like, I don't know what it is, man. You have this, like, uh, style where you're just larger than life. And mm. you're all, I feel like you're always improvising new things and yes. throwing new shit into the, like, when we were in Stavanger, yeah. there was a piano behind the stage. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, fuck it. I'm going to do some piano impersonations. <laughs> yeah. So that was wild, bro. Yeah. yeah. Are you are you always kind of, like, uh, just, f you know, uh, finding moments that you think are funny in the moment and then improvising and chasing that down? Yes, I try to do that uh, every time. It's not always that it works or it, it's not always that I do it even, but uh, if I do it uh, and it works, mm. it's the... Uh, that's that's what I where I enjoy being the most. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of like a fucking smashing down the fourth wall, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, just a another example is when we were at the corner, yeah. and you were standing in front of the bar, and it said F SFO bar, yeah. and you're like, I'll have an SFO pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no, but I I really enjoy your style. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah, I, I just uh, I think I just it's uh, uh some. I don't know uh, where I was like, because uh, when I watch comedy, the 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 funniest the mo the things I laugh at most mm. is the, the things that are that are in the presence. Yep. Things yes. that happen. Or, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. I think I I'm chasing that. Uh, that yeah. I think that's important to chase too. Yeah. You know, actually, uh, a piece of advice that Yonis gave me. Yeah. Was uh, uh, like what? How did he say it? He said it so well. He said it like something, um, create the illusion that all of this is just something that you've thought of now. Yes. 
and uh, and I've fallen into the trap before of like, okay, I'm just reciting something, I'm going through the script, and yep. it doesn't communicate as well as if you're just, you know, creating that yeah, yeah, aura yeah. of like, this is just stuff that I'm thinking about and talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you have to be a good actor to you. You have like, it's just it's like just some tricks that are like you have to you like looking for the words with your eyes mm. so you just move your eyes upwards yeah and you're looking for and then you come up with the word you have written it but you just do that so it makes sense that you just found it up that's a uh, it's such good advice yeah yeah it's really good advice so haven't you been performing with Jonas lately yeah i've been his like warm-up uh, uh guy yeah lately and in, in when he does like these uh corporate uh, jobs yeah and uh that's uh that's been really like hep- helpful because he he's like Norway's greatest yeah, stand up yeah, comic yeah, for sure. uh, and uh, he he listens to uh, me he listens to when i do my set and then he uh, gives uh, feedback afterwards like really thorough and uh, not it's like not in his interest uh, or anything like um, uh, he he doesn't get anything from it mm. But he does it anyway, uh, yeah. so uh, I can, I can become a better comic, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate uh, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. When when he gave me that piece of feedback, it mm. was when we were doing the uh, stand up per minute. Yeah, yeah, and he was sitting on the panel, and like a lot of the feedback that he was giving me to people, I was like paying attention to every word that he said. Yeah, because that motherfucker knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he's just br- he's literally just he's like he sees the code in the matrix. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like when he gave that piece of advice to me, I was like, oh yeah, you picked up on that. Yeah. Like he's real analytical with shit like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't even know how much that he's being uh, he's he's been saying to me that I should even bring up now because it's like his secrets. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's better if Keep they like the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. But he he taught me this uh, one thing. Like it, there are four like um, uh, base baselines in comedy in stand up, mm. and it's improvisation yeah it's presence yeah it's joke writing slash uh, storytelling mm. um, and it's um entertainment yeah and uh, he, he gave me uh, this advice to me he said uh your presence and your entertainment is at top yeah but your joke writing and storytelling it can be better yeah so what you what i need you to do now is the next five times you uh you do a set now you should only focus on story on storytelling write write a full story yeah and tell it and just even if it uh, bombs do it five times so it uh, so you 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 uh, you get better at it and then you can yeah yeah man storytelling and stand up is amazing yeah you know what i mean did did you get to some stories did you have you done them yet uh, yeah uh, recently uh, like uh, um, after the summer vacation i had a story from uh, from a trip and uh, i made it into like a uh, 8 minute bit now yeah and i'm really uh, 8 minute um uh, yeah 8 minute bit and uh, i really love doing it yeah 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 that's good Man, I think the thing that I do that kills the hardest is a story. Yeah. Yeah, it's a story at the end of the set. That's mm. my closer. Mm. And like, I mean, and I'm all, I always kind of think, oh, I think I'm done with the story. And then I just keep finding new ways to tell it. Yeah. Just adding, like tagging it up. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, it's amazing. But I think it's such a good part of the art form, like storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if people can get better at that, mm. like it's it's so much, it's so entertaining. It's so, it's so, uh, it's so like how you tell the story tells so much about you and mm. that's what the audience want to know yeah. who you are. Yeah. So how you pr- view things during the story is like, th- that's gold. Yeah. That's what they want. Yeah. And how is it doing corporate gigs? Uh, it's, uh, it's like really different because I've only done like, I think two times now with the earnest. Yeah. Um, one was uh, it was summer. It was outside, uh, beautiful in, in the south of Norway. Mm. Uh, it was really fun. We just had a good time. We were drinking. We were eating pizza nice. and stuff. It was like a really good time. And then we did Color Line, which is a boat <laughs> that yeah. goes to Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then it comes back the same day. Everyone is there just to buy like cheap beer and uh, cigarettes. Uh, and uh, on the way back, we do the show, mm. and uh, it's just it's just so horrible. 
<laughs> Why is it horrible? Okay, so we get to the boat there and <laughs> we meet like the uh, the hovmester. Uh, I don't know what it is in English. Like uh, the, 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 the the we call it the manager. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, and we go to him and Yuri says like, so how how is the show going to be? Are are there many people here? And he's like. Uh, yeah, about that. Uh, <laughs> and it's just we just instantly know like that there's not gonna be many people at the show. No. <laughs> and um, but we have a good time. We like we gamble on the boat there. Yeah. Uh, we uh, yeah we we buy b- cheap beer and cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, and then it's time for the show, and they're like twenty people. Uh, there is it like a, a full on auditorium or it's like you uh, know it's like a or? it's like a bar yeah yeah and, and the stage is uh, not uh, uh, lifted it's just the ground yeah and then there are like uh, tables and chairs around the tables and it's like twenty people there all spread out the room mm. so uh, what we do is Yarnis goes up and he does five minutes of crowd work yeah. And he gets everyone to sit uh, at the center in the front. Mm. Uh, and then I go uh, up and I'm going to do 10 minutes. Yeah. But uh, uh, these people were like, they were so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was yeah. mostly people that was off duty uh, from the boat. Yeah, okay. Uh, and they were just heckling away. Oh, I, I, shit. I've never experienced like real heckling before. Yeah. This, okay. is, my, this is my first time. And it's just... I'm standing there. It is like a war, and I'm just uh, I'm just trying to get through a joke that uh, at 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 in Oslo it takes one minute to finish the joke, but I'm just standing here and doing it for five minutes because I never get through. Yeah, and uh, I'm just I'm just battling and battling, and uh, uh, after seven minutes, I'm like I'm done. Here it is. Uh, take it away yeah and he comes up he battles for 30 minutes <laughs> oh my god <laughs> he has to physically make a, uh, he has to break up f- two friends because they were talking too much and he was just like <laughs> yeah just pushed him down on the chair and just <laughs> held him as a hostage <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did 15 minutes of like uh, on uh, of stand up but not being interrupted and it was like yeah sounds like beautiful chaos yeah we uh, we laughed all the way back home, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was hard. Oh my god, yeah. it's not, it's it's an adventure though. Mm. Yeah, dude, it's he- heckling can kind of really fucking get in the way, right? Yeah, it, especially when it's like it, everyone in the audience is in on the heckling. Like, mm. oh, no, oh, it's them against you. Yeah, I, th- I think it was like one family who was there to see Yernis because the two sons who were like thirteen and seventeen, they were like b- really big fans of him. So everyone ruined it for that family. Yeah, that's fucked that up. Was, yeah, that was fucked up. So yeah. uh, that's the only thing that was like, ah, oh, that's, uh, that's shit. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but those kids have a story to tell. Yeah, <laughs> they, they get do. back to school. <laughs> do. Like, hey, how was your weekend? Uh, guess what we saw? <laughs> Holy shit. Man, I haven't had to deal with that much heckling either, to be honest. No. No, because generally the crowds in Oslo are pretty yeah. polite. Yeah. I mean, occasionally you'll get some drunk asshole yep. that's just going to yell out and he's just too wasted and doesn't give a fuck. Yep. Or you'll like ask a question to somebody else and then they'll jump in and just like hijack the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, uh, you can entertain it for a while, yeah. but it kind of just it gets, it gets a little bit old if they just keep at yeah. it and at it and at it. It's uh, funny because you can... Uh, when people d- d- don't laugh, that's one thing. But heckling is a whole other, uh, whole other thing. Yeah, you don't know how to handle it because it's, <laughs> it's different. Every heckle, mm. uh, every heck is different. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, have yeah. you ever Have you ever had to like roast a heckler? <laughs> I don't remember right now, but I probably have, but uh, I don't remember now. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of like you're going into the unknown territory yeah. when you start doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've tried it before and it's gone well and I've yeah. tried it before and it's gone badly. Yeah, because if you're too harsh at the start, they, they just... Uh, yeah, I roasted a heckler once at, uh, <laughs> at Lincoln Sports Bar. Perfect. I was doing like... Uh, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm number ninth in, uh, <laughs> in such, the lineup. Such a long lineup. Yeah. And everyone is getting heckled by this one guy in front. 
and and I, I was just so frustrated because no one did anything about it. Like Talak was up, and and not to do not to throw Talak under the bus, but he was like he was like playing along with him, and it, it was fun that. But I was like, fuck, if he heckles me, I'm gonna destroy that motherfucker. Yeah. And uh, I I came on the stage, I was doing my thing, I was like, I I, I and I had so much energy. I I had just been on vacation for a long time, so I didn't have uh, I had hadn't done stand up for a long time. And I was just just so fucking ready i just went up there and the train was like going 130 miles an hour and um and he said something and i just went ballistic and just i remember i said i said like you know there's a line from this stage to the audience that separates the of sender from the mutaki uh, and I, I and i said uh, we have like we have 11 comedians up there we don't need another one <laughs> yeah no that's a good line <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um and uh, yeah that, that was fun yeah that was really fun yeah it's fun yeah but it's yeah yeah it, it's fun when you can pull it off you know mm. when you get away mm. with it and it, but it's even better if you can pull it off get away with it okay i've given you the attention yeah. you want some attention you got some attention now let's move on yeah that's when it's good yeah did he let it go or was yeah he... he let it go from there okay that's from good there on. yeah yeah but w- what i did was i i was planning the comebacks yeah. in my head before i went up on stage oh <laughs> nice so you had like a fresh bag of ammo yeah 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 yeah, yeah. shit yeah that's nice, man. That's good. Yeah. Hey, don't you do an open mic show now? Yeah, at yeah. the New York Center. Yeah. Uh, we've done one show mm. and another one this Friday. Yeah. And that's really that's like really fun to have like like that uh, responsibility and that trust yeah. from yeah. It's like the coolest place ever. I it's love best. being uh, there. Yeah, it's um, awesome. And and is it? It's not just stand up comedy, is it? No, I try to like uh, uh, have a ver- variety of uh, express uh, different types of uh, uh, artistical expressions. It's a good way to say it. Yes, <laughs> uh, but uh, mostly stand up. Yeah. But I also have invited some of my friends from uh, Revi mm. uh, to come do characters and stuff, and that that's gonna be real fun because they have no like. Everyone I knew or know from the uh, review uh, environment, they like uh, who are like really fun, doesn't have an outlet for that type of comedy. Yeah, okay. So uh, because character, you, you don't do a character at a normal like stand-up show or at least like, um, well, I do it. <laughs> you do it. Yeah, you do it. But I've done stand-up, so I know how how I'm I'm familiar with like the form of it. And uh, I think, I think that's the the thing that scares the most of uh, people f- from not doing stand up is like not knowing the form, like not not knowing how it works from uh, you get booked to when you're there and how you should uh, how how to uh, uh, like um, like the social stuff. Yeah, and uh, and like the responsibility you like you have absolutely all the responsibility for for what you're doing on stage, mm. like. Um, uh yeah i think i think that's the that's the main reason people yeah work. because at least with stand-up it's a pretty clear process yeah do you know what i mean hey can i get a spot yeah mm. you got a spot you're doing 10 minutes you're doing 15 minutes yeah. cool there's like five or six other people you go on you do your thing like that's it yeah but i could imagine if you're doing like a different kind of art yeah i don't know like fucking magicians or th- th- review type shit yeah I, I don't know whether there's just a lot of uh events that they can just turn up to and then just perform no it's it's nothing no you have to make it yourself you have to like make uh, make an ensemble and book a, a show play to and and that that's like a lot of work yeah yeah and exactly uh, yeah. Sta- isn't stand up the easiest thing to do i, think I mean <laughs> n- not not like the actual performance no no but when it comes to like the logistics yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. we just need a stage and a microphone yeah you got that yeah. cool we'll see you tomorrow at yeah. eight o'clock yeah I, could, I, could I love it. I love the simplicity of it. Yeah. Me too. What do you love about stand up? Why do you love stand up? Oh, I love it because um, I love uh, 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 respon- direct response, mm. uh, joke response, joke. I, I love like, and I think it's because every stand up comic has like a, a need to uh, uh, yeah, some heads behoove and need for attention. attention. Yeah. yeah. And the best way, uh, and the like, the uh, the best way to get that is like telling a joke and get immediate response. Yeah, it's very honest. Yeah, 
It's no bullshit. Yeah. It's like. Was the joke good? Yeah. Yeah, they're laughing. Yeah, Was yeah, it yeah, not yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not laughing, motherfucker. <laughs> no. yeah, 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 yeah. And and I love like the environment. I love hanging out with other stand up comics. That's the like best. that's my favorite thing. Mine yeah. too. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll go on stage for fifteen minutes, but I'll end up hanging out for yeah, four yeah, hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm doing I'm doing a brew dog mm. uh, show the tin soup uh, with the Bastians. That's and, tonight. Uh, brothers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, be, I'm a uh, MC there and I'm just looking forward because after this I'm just gonna go there. Uh, even if it starts in like two hours, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna have a burger. I'm gonna have a beer. I'm gonna sit there, wait for the other comics, mm. have a good time. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I, you know, one of the things that I also love about doing stand-up comedy in the community is that you get to see so many friends so frequently. Yeah, and you don't always know who's gonna be there. You know what I mean? You turn up and like if you're doing like two or three spots a week or something, yeah. you're hanging out with you know pretty much the same people mm. all the time two three nights a week for years yeah and you get real close and you form like real good friendships yeah and i just kept thinking you know like if i didn't have stand up in my life would i be this social would yeah. i would i be going out as much mm. would i be hanging out with friends as much so i think for people that are doing comedy that end up falling into this really positive community yeah it must be so beneficial absolutely for for their um sense of belonging and like sense of self-esteem and sense of community yeah. you know because it's not like one group either it's not just like if there are it's, you, you just have to be some from the group and that uh, yeah it's so great yeah yeah it's nice I man it. yeah I, I, I love it too and it's always pretty entertaining yeah you know what i mean if you're hanging if you're hanging out backstage or after a show yeah, with like yeah, five yeah. comedians like the show doesn't stop <laughs> the show just moves from the <laughs> yeah, stage yeah, 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 yeah. like to the bar yeah yeah i think that's what i love too because i've, I've been so like uh, i went to like uh, i've always done theater so i've done like since i was a little kid i did uh, on video and i went to drama uh, uh as a uh, like a uh, linear and um and I did folk school there, theater, and uh, the difference is uh, like theater and revue. It's like it's you get close bonds and you hug and you cheer each other up, but you never uh, critique uh, an, uh, uh, one another. Mm. Y you never give criticism. Yeah, but in stand up, oh, you yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You could be mean. Yeah, you could be mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I lo I, th that's what I love about it as well, I think. I love it too. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've been roasted by my comedian friends so many times. Yeah. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I love it. And yeah. I know it's in like good spirits and we're all roasting each other. And you're mm. sitting around and maybe somebody ate shit and yeah. they know they ate shit. <laughs> yeah. And they go, How did you do tonight? <laughs> oh, I think it was about a five. Five. That's four too many, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you just let them know. Oh, yeah. You let him know you're honest and funny and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there's nothing else like it. No, it's not. You know what I mean? I, I kind of like, I've almost forgotten my life before stand up. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a way, it just kind of like, it was entertaining and I always had hobbies and I always did things. Yeah. But like, since I started doing stand up comedy, like, there's no turning back. But when did you start? Uh, for two, th the end of t uh, 2018. Okay. Yeah. So I think I was on stage for the first time, maybe like in October, 2018. Yeah. And so then I did a few shows for the rest of that year. Yeah. And then I hit it like pretty hard yeah. in 2019. Okay. And then, you know, everything with the pandemic yeah. and, and it shut down. And then we did the, uh, what year is it now? 2020. And then we did the Lata Vaccina. Yeah. You know, cause remember there was like, there was like a period in 2020 where things opened again mm. a little bit, yep. but not real much. And I took advantage of that time, but people were still kind of sketched out with like them, you know, like in yeah. summer it was all right. And then in 2021, I did the Lata Vaccina tour. Yeah. And then that was just like, okay, we're back. Are we yeah. back? Are we back? And then it kind of shut down again. And then 2022 rolled around. It was yeah. like, there's no stopping me now. No. Like, fuck, there's, there's no pandemic is going to turn me off for the stage. You no. know? So, uh, yeah, that's it, man. So you, you know? started in Oslo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I started in Oslo. I did the RDK course. Yeah. And then I did Josefinas for the first time. Right. And then, uh, you know, just been going strong since then. Yeah. Yeah, you. Uh, I. Uh, I remember I, the first time I saw you. I was also at Utfordern, I think. Mm. Um, you had long hair. Yeah. Uh, and you did. I. I, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you did like stage writing at that time. Like you went up with the premise, and then you just like 
yeah. milked it on stage. You had like an Olymp, I think it was like a, a Paralympics bit. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right yeah I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. I don't remember the bit, but that was that was my goal. Because I was always like with Ut for them though. Yeah. It, it's uh, kind of like uh, yeah. for me. I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try some shit and I'm going to just... Uh, my exercise is uh, going up with a theme and seeing what I can make happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm always trying stuff like that out, man. That's really cool. I, I haven't done that yet, mm. uh, going up with the premise, but I, I really uh, want to. Do it. Yeah. I think you'd crush it. Yeah. You'd absolutely kill it. You know what I would want to do one day? Yeah. This is what I want to do. I want to like meet up at a venue, yeah. right? Like an hour before. Let's mm. say it's just you and me. Mm. And I go, okay, we're going to try some shit out. I want you to write down five topics. Yeah. Okay, I got an hour to come up with 10 minutes about those topics. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Do some shit like that. Yeah. And just see what you can make happen out of something that is just presented to you. It's Absolutely. thrown at you on the spot. Yeah. yeah. But man, I mean, I, I talk about this on the podcast all the time, but I'm a big fan of failing. Yeah. I'm a big fan of trying things. I'm a big fan of being okay if they don't work out. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of just like, we're fucking going for it. Mm. And you know what, man? It works out more often than not. Yeah. It, you know, it usually does. So, I mean, it's not like the best performance ever. It's not like doing your tight 10, your no. tight 15, but it's a completely different experience. Yeah. Just look at improv comedy. It's like 70% of what's funny in improv is when it fails. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. The, yeah. the funny is in the failure. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually did. That's where I met Liban. Uh, I was doing improv in 2018 or 2019. Yeah. And then I became friends with Liban. All right. Yeah. And we were doing a, we were doing a lot of improv together. And so I'm l taking all of these lessons from improv. Things yeah. like don't be uh, interesting, be mm. interested. Yeah. Uh, the funny is in the failure. Uh, you can't do anything wrong. You no. can't do anything wrong. If you do anything, it's impossible yeah. to do something wrong. So then I incorporated those lessons and that mindset into my stand-up comedy, which gave me the confidence and the ability to always try new things. Yeah. Whether they work, whether they don't work, huh, whatever, mm, mm. you know? I think that's a really important mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you, you know, you, like, you, you, you meet some comedians and, like, they're really afraid of bombing. Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't want to bomb. I don't want to bomb. Yeah, I don't want to bomb either. But if no. I do bomb and it happens, you know, like, okay, it's not the end of the world. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, even though if you have insecurities before you go on stage, uh, just put on a mask. Mm. Just put on that mask of confidence. Yep. Just yeah, I, I I like that's that's like my main thing. I'll just do some push-ups. I'll like yeah, get, get a get a pump Jack, going. Son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just fucking do a shot. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Do a shot of testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> Raw egg. Yeah, uh, dude. Get some breast milk. <laughs> yeah, squeeze some pregnant chick's titties. <laughs> and uh, just uh, just put on that mask of confidence and just go up there and do do it uh, because uh, I like I know it's uh, I know a lot of people talk about that like uh, insecurities and like especially when it comes to like boys and uh, girl, men or women in stand up mm. uh, it's like a discussion of insecurities and stuff uh, and I'm not saying I have the uh, I have the um, um, what do you call it? Uh, the, uh, the, the cocaine? The, no, the, 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 cocaine? like the re re resolu re resolution. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So the solution. So the solution. Yeah. But uh, my solution yeah. uh, when I'm feeling like uh, insecure is put on that mask and just go up there. Okay. And so when you say put on that mask, does yeah. that mean like go into a character or go into the uh, role of somebody who is ready to take on the world? I think I did that in the beginning mm. when I did stand up the first times because that's that's where I felt comfortable yeah uh, but uh, as it uh, as the uh, the days have passed uh, I have <laughs> been <laughs> as the days have turned <laughs> yeah, into <as> night <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I found that going up there as myself is much more uh, I, I see much more approachable and uh, like uh, relatable but uh, 
it's it's a classic story of like fake it till you make it. Yes. So I faked it. I faked being like confident on stage until I actually felt confident on stage, and from then on, it I uh, I am comfortable on stage. Yeah. 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 Because when you were saying that, the something that I've been exploring on stage lately is vulnerability. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just being I uh, like okay, because you know what? I'm I'm a person up here, and I'm like sometimes I'm not always a hundred percent confident, but yeah. sometimes I feel pretty vulnerable. Yeah. And then I can lean into that vulnerability. And I feel like, yeah, you know, that's a good representation of how I feel at the moment. Mm. And that gets communicated to the audience in a way that uh, can add to the performance. Absolutely. I've seen, like, uh, Mart. Mm. I've seen him kill. Yep. Absolutely kill. Everybody in the room laughing. But one time it was at the, the Humor Festival at Salt yep. this summer. Mm. It was... Uh, early like a wednesday it was like six o'clock on a wednesday everyone was hung over uh except for matt because he doesn't drink yeah. uh, <laughs> but he uh, has also like a hungover uh, vibe to him yeah and it was ut for Darna, and he goes up on the stage and he 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 does like uh okay minus uh but he's vulnerable mm. that's that's the best set i've ever seen him do yeah 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 uh, I, I, yeah, I just, oh my, I just love them. I just, yeah. there was so much love for him at that uh, time. It was so good, yeah. Yeah, because there is something about that vulnerability when somebody's performing and they're just, this is my heart. I'm putting it right here. Yeah. I'm not masking anything. I'm not trying to anything. You no. guys are connecting with how I am right now. And it's like, it's really, you know, it's a, it's a kind of form of like connecting with the audience that's so honest. Yeah. And they go, yeah, all right, nice. We mm. get you, bro. Get I you. learned that also from Jörn. It's like, uh, you can go up there and you can you can be like neutral. Mm. And then you s feel how the audience is. Mm. And then you start like doing the crowd work and you, okay, so they're like this. Okay, I'll save that for later. And then I'll do a bit, they'll laugh. Yeah, uh, but I'm not gonna give away uh, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's like, it's meeting the audience at a common ground on a common ground. I think that's really important. And if yeah. the audience already is, if if it's tension in the audience, and when you present like the MC and you're the MC, and they go, they it's uh, uh, like uh, applauding and they're standing up. You have to match that energy. Yeah. But if it's at Lincoln on a Thursday and everyone is sitting and they're almost like not even paying attention, you have to meet them at that uh, ground as well. Yes. So it all mirroring is like really important. So that's important. one of the things yeah. I always talk about is that whole mirroring thing. Yeah. It's like you got to kind of match, mirror, and then lead. Yeah. Like that's your p part of your responsibility, Absolutely. especially as the MC. Yeah. Because, you know, you want to try to like, okay, where are we? We're here. Maybe there's some insecurity in the audience. Maybe yeah. there's uh, not a totally unified crowd. All right, let me see if I can like unify the crowd. Now we're matching energy. Now we're going in this direction. You guys are with me. We are with me. Yeah. Everybody's having a good time. We're yeah. all together now. Next yeah. comedian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But I've, I've also I've seen it. I've seen it both ways. You know, I've seen it where like the uh, MC especially ends up getting uh, led by the audience. Yeah. And I've and it never goes well. No, no, no. It no, never no. goes well. And I've seen it where like the audience have been kind of insecure. Yeah. And then the MC is like, well, this is a weird vibe. Aren't you guys weird? Isn't yeah. this weird? And then they go, oh yeah. Well, I guess you just made it extra weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, but it's a really like, uh, it's a thin line between being like insecure and making the audience insecure and like being insecure for this, for the, uh, for the humor's sake. Yes. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's really like a gray area. You, you really want to be on the side where everyone laughs, but it's, yeah. it's hard and you don't, it's hard to see yourself from the outside when you're standing there mm. and you have well you can't see yourself from the outside no. because you need to be in the moment yeah you can't be like looking at anything I, externally no. apart from what you're doing right I then think and there. it's just experience that can make you a good uh, like uh, make make you do the right thing in that kind of situation 100% yeah 100% agree you need to be on the side where your insecurities make the audience insecure yeah you have to have experienced that yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, I've been here before a hundred times. Yeah. I know how this is going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, that's one thing that's really good about Espen, Abrahamson. Mm. You know, one of the things, I mean, a fantastic comedian, yeah. great joke writing, all yeah. that sort of stuff. But what he does when he goes on stage, he walks on stage and he's like, I've done this before. Yeah. I know this set. Mm. I know what's going to happen. Yeah, I've yeah, told yeah, these yeah, jokes yeah. and everybody loves them. Yeah. You guys are in good hands. Yes. Espen makes the crowd feel 
like he's going to give them what they came there to experience. Yes. And he does it in such a confident way mm. that they just go, yeah, we trust this guy. Yeah. You know, he, he looks like us. He's mm. one of us. And he's just standing on the stage. And yep, we're going to give you the keys to the Lambo. Where are we going, motherfucker? Mm. And it's it like, it's been, it surprised me. Like I, the first time I saw him emceeing was this summer. And I've only seen him in like do sets, not and not ever crowd working. Mm. And he's such a good crowd worker. He man. murders. Yeah, he murders the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Did we when he he was with us when we did the crush tour? Yeah, yeah. And we did a show in Molda, mm. right? We sold three tickets. Yeah. Okay, three tickets <laughs> on Instagram. It was sold out, Jeez. but in reality, we sold three tickets, <laughs> and uh, it was raining, so we we're handing out flyers. No, nobody's coming. When we start the show like 30 minutes late, just hoping that more people would come, yeah. there ends up being five people in the audience. Mm. Espen's the MC. We chose Espen to do that, you know, hours before. No yeah. matter what happens, you're the MC. This motherfucker does maybe 30 minutes in front of five people and it fucking kills. <laughs> it kills. It kills. And with five people in the audience, yeah. that's not just like, hey, what do you do? No, oh, you're no, this, no, you're no, that. No, no. It's okay, we're going deep into every single person. Yeah. And he must have been on stage. I mean, it was a, a two and a half, three hours, whatever, however long it was. Yeah. He was on stage throughout the whole night for at least an hour. Just Jeez. murdering, yeah. murdering, and he did so good yeah. that one of the guy, one of the five people in the audience, ended up finding him later and saying, "Hey, can you? I'm turning sixty. Can you come and do comedy at my yeah. show?" That's how good that motherfucker is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was comfortable. Yeah, that's like, yeah, he's insane, man. Yeah, he, he deserved to win. Yeah. I think. Yeah, the other comedians, fantastic. Yeah, but you know, for the you know, for the stage present, all of those pillars that you mentioned. Yeah, Espen, 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 tick, mm. tick, 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 tick. Yeah, I, I did. You see the latter uh, show? No, did no. you see it? No, no, I didn't. I haven't spoken to anyone who has seen it. I'm uh, really curious because I saw some like stories of it, and it looked like it, it, there were only like ha half. Half of the audience were filled up mm. because of the like the cameras. Uh, e and yeah, stuff. all the production takes yeah. up so much. Um, yeah. No, I, I would have gone, but I think I was doing a spot that night. Mm. So I was like, "I love you, Espen, but I'm doing some comedy <laughs> tonight <laughs> myself, buddy." <laughs> yeah, I think I was maybe too. It was last Wednesday, was it? Oh, you mean when they shot it? Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. It was last Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was last Wednesday. I don't remember, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I thought you were talking about during the competition. Okay. Yeah, because no, no, then no. I was doing a spot. Okay. But uh, last Wednesday, I, I think I had something else going on. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Dude, are you going to send in a tape and try to audition for Latter? The thing is, I was uh, going to do it. I sent like uh, the, the first email where I'm like, hey, I'm up to this. Mm. And they were like, okay, send us this and this and this and this. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's a lot. <laughs> 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 this is my dream, but you guys are asking too much. What do you want? It's oh like God. that bit that Louis C.K. has. He's like, I have destroyed careers because sleep because of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like he doesn't want to wake up in the morning. Uh, he's like, he doesn't want to wake up before like ten. And he's like, I have given up careers because <laughs> I didn't want to wake up before ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Could you imagine if Louis C.K. Oh, did Jesus. anything else no, besides no, comedy? No, 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 no. Oh man. Did have you, you seen this movie? The 4th of July? Yeah. No, have you? Uh, no, no, no. Dude, I want to watch it. Yeah, me yeah. too. We, we should we get together. We yeah. can like, uh, download it and fucking find a TV Absolutely. and b get a bunch of comedians yeah. and play it. Yeah. That sounds good. Ah, oh, shit. Did you go to the Louis show? Did you see? Yes, it? I did. Oh. Yes, I did. Were you at the opening night where all the comedians were there? Uh, no, I was at the second show. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have a... Yeah, sense? please. Go ahead. Let me fuel your snooze addiction. Oh, yeah. I'll just put it here so if you ever want one, just grab yeah. it, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, were you at the first one? Yeah. 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 I think that was better than the second one. I think so. Only I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Why were you disappointed? I think it because uh, I like, uh, uh, um, he is now an old man. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, it was more like being at a museum, looking at a, a beautiful piece of art, yep. but not being able to experience it at its peak. Yeah. It's like if you end up marrying a chick who used to be a model. Yeah. 
And you're like, you didn't get the model, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good metaphor. It's it's a Jim Jim it's a Jim Jeffries. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, don't, don't think I'm that smart. No. <laughs> uh, but I know what you mean. But, yeah. uh, for, for my experience mm. of the event was fantastic yeah. because I did a warm up show. Well, not a really a warm up show, but we did a show before the event at yeah. Who Hurt. Yeah. And so that you know, like there was you know like fucking a bunch of comedians there. Yeah. So you know, however many people were performing, there was like double or triple that mm. just hanging out. Mm. And so, you know, we got, you know, we got fucking, we had some drinks, we smoked, we, yeah. you know, we went to the show like together and I was sitting, mm. you know, I think I bought like five or six tickets, yeah. it was just all comedians. And, and then it was so good to seeing everybody there. I think, I, I think that's, uh, has a lot to do with who you're watching it with. A hundred like, the, percent. The mood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I, I think I was like, it was like, a, for me, it was like, uh, came home from school uh had a shit dinner mm. um had a good time with my i watched it with my girlfriend and uh, uh and another couple yeah and uh, we had a good time like uh, but but it's um yeah it would be different i i because i just watched the have you seen the uh, martin bayer uh, show no i haven't Solo seen Solo. it i want to see it but i haven't seen it so i've seen it two times yeah i saw it w- once on a tuesday uh, I hadn't had much to drink before. I uh, just went in there like uh, with uh, b- uh, blank sheets. Uh, <laughs> I went with blank, blank sheets. <laughs> I just turned up to a show with blank sheets. Blank sheets. Uh, and uh, watched it. And I was like, uh, I was also like uh, kind of disappointed. I was like, oh, with this, he could do that better. He could do this better. <laughs> <laughs> Being like a fucking uh, elitist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You elitist asshole. Yeah. They went straight to Lincoln and bombed. That's what <laughs> <laughs> That's how much an elitist I am, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I went the, I went there same week on the Saturday, mm. and I just did like me and Gaute. We we uh, we just uh, finished uh, um, uh, making Gaute show on YouTube. Mm. We had a we had a inspiring uh, for that, and we were having a good time. We had a beer and stuff. I was I met my brother and his wife and my girlfriend. We we just had a real good time. We were laughing. We had uh, and the show started and it was a whole new experience man. yeah it was maybe the greatest solo show i have ever seen wow i had such a good time yeah yeah, yeah. that's such a contrast from the first time yeah dude i say you're struggling with that microphone yeah just just kind of bend it up yeah, just yeah, treat yeah. it like it's your bitch <laughs> yeah, you, yeah yeah just make it yours there you go right there there you go yeah it's uh if it, if it slips out there is a little knob on the side that you can kind of tighten uh, up there you yeah, go. you got it. You figured yeah. it out. Look, yeah. you're technically proficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. this is two years of film and television school. <laughs> yeah. I can adjust the microphone. I'm qualified. 180,000 kroners oh, to be man. able to turn this. Sound is the worst thing about production. 10% of the product, 90% of the problem. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God, I hate sound, but I get it. Yeah. I hate sound, but I get it. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you. Man, I mean, I'm filming shit all the time. Yeah. Almost, you know, like, w- e- not every day, but most days. Yeah. I'm fucking filming something. And you're right. It's always like, there's wind in the microphone, yeah. interference with the channel. And mm. like, ah, oh, come on, just get it together. I think if I ever make a, like a f- full movie, like a spiel film, uh, if I'm directing, hey, hey, by the way, yeah. not if, when, when, yes, when. of course, when. yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. When uh, I am, I, I think I'm gonna go like uh, old Italian movies, like just shooting everything without sound and then doing everything in post production with a piano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wore the oh, where's the killer? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, like Etteshink, uh, like uh, Cinema Paradiso, mm. uh, it's like everything is uh, uh, everything. Ever, it's, the sound is all like post production, yeah. and you uh, you think about it for the first five minutes, but then you 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 don't think about it ever yeah. again. You just accept it. Yeah, yeah. Are you uh, okay? I got a qu- I got a couple of questions. Yeah. First question: If you could make any movie, yeah. what movie would you make? I think I would make like um, I think uh, okay. Because uh, I ha- I have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> you sound yeah, like somebody yeah, I've heard before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Martin Luther <laughs> yeah, yeah. King Jr. We have like uh, we have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> Being dreamers is one of them. Uh, <laughs> I think your dream's more important. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Your dream of making a movie, equality, whatever. Oh, I'm making my film. I love I love uh, gangster films oh, and mafia stuff. Shit, uh, I never would have guessed. Uh, no, I, I love it. I, and I especially like uh, Scandinavian like uh, pusher. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Good stuff. classic. That, that's that's one of my favorite movies, like mm. that trilogy. Um, I think I would make like uh, or I don't I don't know because uh, it's not a personal it, it's it's not personal to me the mafia I've never <laughs> that's <laughs> weird I thought you were a member <laughs> yeah, of the Sicilian yeah. well, familia well think again <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, but mafia is like a genre I really love and would be uh, it would be so fun working with it uh, what, do, what do you love about the mafia movies I, I think it's like the it's just the tone and the the the, t- the pay Mm. Uh, I love just like um, because you have like on the one side you have like uh, uh, crane shots and like uh, like in in uh, in the Godfather you have like all these big shots and but in like the Scandinavian things you have like the handheld like just really just chaotic things mm. and I just love the contrast there and being able to work between that and they like the I think the best acting. Uh, is in mafia pictures because it's uh, the uh, the 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 actors get to be something much bigger than themselves. Mm. Uh, uh, it's yeah. I've got a perfect example for that. Yeah, uh, Joe Pesci. Yeah, right. Yeah. If you know Joe Pesci in Casino yeah, yeah, and yeah, Goodfellas. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh shit, because yeah. I remember seeing him in like comedies. Yeah. You know, like fucking Home Alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Oh! Yeah. He gets burned by the doorknob, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's just this fucking homicidal maniac. Yeah, and he's so big. He's yeah. like, uh, and I think uh, that's what I like with uh, about stand up too. Is like, uh, on the personal note, I, I come from like the uh, I come from like a. Uh, um, uh, rural, uh, the rural side of Norway, mm. uh, and I grew up uh, there. Uh, good, good, good times. Uh, <laughs> good family, good economy, and all that. But it, but, like I, I carry with me that um, that humbleness. I think from there that that's like the jantelov. Yes, is really strong in the rural side of Norway. Like yeah. you should never uh, stick out. Yeah, and uh, and and. Uh, and i think when I go on stage and stand up, and I like, uh, I I have been insecure with my body like all my life uh, until like the uh, until I went to Vidrigo and then did like the review and stuff, and theater. Uh, and when I just I unbutton my shirt at stand up and I just wear a, a wife beater and the crowd is cheering, I was just like, this is bigger than me. Yeah. And I think that's what I like about mafia movies as well. That's that's how I connect with it because mm. yeah, yeah, I think it's something there. Yeah, dude, that's really interesting what you say about yeah. insecurities. Yeah. Because one of the things that I've always noticed when I'm doing my comedy yeah. is when somebody says something towards me and mm. it makes me feel insecure, I yeah. go, that's a bit. Yeah. That's a bit. Yeah. Because you're being real honest. And yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, the yeah. honesty is reflected in the way that I feel about yeah. it. So, like, you know, when I was doing the um, uh, Lata Vaccina tour, um, you know, the, a couple of people were like joking, oh, you're so old. You're so old. <laughs> you know, you're the oldest one. You're yeah. the oldest one. I was like, ah, you know what? I am the oldest one. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, fucking yeah. run with it. Yeah. Yeah. So then I just picked it up and uh, ran with it. But I think like when you're performing and to be really honest, yeah. like all of the insecurities that you have, you turn them into strengths. Yes. And you notice that with people who are, I don't know, like fucking disabled or they have some kind of condition. Mm. They're always making jokes about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really important to do f- mm. for you as a person yeah. as well to like, okay, maybe I have body issues. Now the body issues that I have is what makes you guys love me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Dude, what a fucking fantastic form of therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Another beer? Please, yeah. another beer, bartender. Ah, nice. Beer number dos. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the second beverage. Oh, crap, this motherfucker. The drinking game. <laughs> we should have a podcast <laughs> drinking game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Just, everybody just gets lit up. <laughs> ah, shit. You ever thought about doing a podcast? I know you said you did radio. Do you still do radio? Or? No, like I've 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 done like radio two times. Uh, okay. So it's just I've been a guest on a radio show. Um, 
I, I I would yeah I thought about it I was like uh, in like uh, the idea of uh, being hangover and just uh, talking about yesterday and some reflections when being like uh, mm. hangover yeah uh, but uh, I did I I recorded one episode on my phone and that was it but I I I don't know it's just. Uh, I haven't found like my. Th- I want to find my thing first, yeah. and then I'll make a podcast because I love characters, mm. and I would do something. I think that's that's what I would do if I did a podcast, like uh, interview myself and stuff. But it, it's done before, and uh, yeah, I have just have to create a, a thing that I'm really comfortable doing. Yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Everything's been done before. Yeah, you know what I mean. It is. Like, yeah, you, but it. But that's true. Even though everything's been done before. When you add your own spin to it, yeah. it's unique. Yeah. Right? Mm. Like, I mean, we're just fucking sitting here talking. How many podcasts are just two guys talking? Yeah, shit? yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's probably the most common format of a podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. But I like this format. Yeah. Because, first of all, I mean, just being able to sit down with like you mm. and talk about shit that we love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in an uninterrupted environment. Yeah. It's kind of perfect. And I, when I did the pod, when I started this, I just wanted to do something that I could do consistently Absolutely. and that I enjoyed mm. with like a very low bar. Yeah. You know, I did the first like 15 episodes without cameras. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck it. It's just laptop, microphones. Let's go. Easy. No mm. problem. Mm. And then I added the cameras, slightly more complicated, yeah. adds a little bit more time. Mm. But still, like, I can, you know, I can do a million of these things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird too but it's just we're, 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 the 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 thing that i think um no i don't have uh, i i don't know man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's also i don't i don't think i have time no uh i, I do with school and stuff i i just I'm looking so forward to being done with school. How much more time do you have for school? Uh, so I'm in second year now. Yeah. So uh, I, and it's a bachelor. So I ha- I have uh, this year and then another one. Oh, okay. So yeah. you got two more years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then when you're finished with and it's full time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so when you're finished, oh, man, you, that's a long time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But. Uh, is I mean I don't even know where your career is going to be in two years. I mean the trajectory you're on, bro. You're yeah. just going to be fucking smashing it and smashing it and smashing I, it. Yeah, I, I always think that like, and I always uh, and I also love acting. Yeah. Like uh, I I really I I am at uh, like Enrico doing like a, a, a kid show, a ki- kid sitcom, what's family it, sitcom. What's it called? Vash uh, Norielir. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, we done. We we just finished uh, season two. Yeah. It comes out like now in October, I think. Do you have a a main role in that? Uh, yeah, I uh, I uh, it's like uh, I am the family friend that al- always uh, that's always at the house. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, part. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, I love being on set. Uh, I'm really comfortable on set. Uh, so uh, I've always like thought like uh, if I ever get uh, an opportunity to uh, or like a, an opportunity that's so good that I quit school, I would quit school. But that's not a, that's like not a, a, a um, holding I should have no because when I'm in school, I wanna I wanna give it on my all there. Yeah. Uh, so I've like um, I came uh, this year before I started school. I was that that was my uh, attitude against school. I was like, if uh, if I ever get something that's bigger than this, I'm gonna quit. But that's not <laughs> that's 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 like so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's so cocky and uh, and uh, like uh, and when I started school now, it's like. It is hard school, and it's hard work, uh, and that's that's one like I need to uh, I need to practice working hard. Yes, yeah. I need to have that in my life because I think if I, I didn't go to school now and I just did stand up, uh, I think it, it uh, my my life my routines would like slide out and yeah. I would. Uh, it's good to be anchored towards something. Yes. And and school is a structured program. Yes. And then you have to follow that structured program. Yeah. So you got to be structured. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of ways to get to the end goal. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're, you got all these pursuits going, right? You're studying, you're doing stand up comedy, mm. you're acting. Yes. So, I mean, like, if some opportunity does present itself and you have to take a break from school, yeah. I mean, it's not like you can never go back. No. And it's, if your goal with studying film and television is to, you know, one day make a mafia Philippines, yeah. you could probably maybe get that opportunity through the experience that you get actually acting, yeah. making connections, talking to the script writer, understanding mm. what the process is from mm. a practical perspective. Absolutely. You know, I think like school and education is really important, yeah. but I also think that it doesn't actually trump life experience. No. You know what I mean? Uh, and, I, and especially with something that's an artistic pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, oh, because I went to drama at uh, Vidrigon and stuff, and uh, and but I and didn't get good at acting from that, especially not in television. No, I got good at acting on stage, but not in television. The, all my television skills are from being on set and acting. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How could you get a better school than actually? How, how? What can teach you to act for television better than actually acting for television? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you know, it's a it's a. Uh, there's a lot of money involved. You know what I mean? Like there's people that are getting paid there, the camera guy and all the directors and mm. the lighting guys. You got to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? The pressure's on, motherfucker. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's that's what I'm kind of getting at yeah. is that the experience that you get from actually doing the thing that you want to do is pretty invaluable. Mm. And, you know, I mean, I, I make videos and shit like this all the time, mm. right? And I've tried to hire people that went to, you know, film schools mm. and they don't fucking know what they're doing. No. A lot of them. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I didn't learn anything from a school. I, I just figured it out because somebody's paying me 10,000 kronos to make a video. Yeah. I better learn how to edit. Yeah. I'm not getting paid yeah. and I'm going to look like an asshole yeah. and everybody's going to say, this guy, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Mm. So you rise to the occasion. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think like the occasion to rise to mm. in a professional setting is so much higher than the occasion to rise to for a student exam. Yeah. You know, the bar is just high. Mm. Mm. But uh, on the other hand, it's like uh, I, I would never do a documentary if I didn't uh, uh, if I didn't went to school and it was a task uh, in the school. Yeah. Uh, so now we've done like uh, this y uh, this uh, semester, uh, we we only have documentary as a, as a subject, mm. and uh, we just did a personal documentary about ourselves, mm. uh, turning the camera ag against uh, towards ourselves. That uh, has been very valuable. Like uh, before, like turning it against uh, towards uh, someone else, yeah. uh, and then we have like this big, uh, big task. That's uh, that's making a documentary about an environment we don't know mm. uh, from before. Yeah. So you're going with comedy. <laughs> 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 We're following India James. <laughs> On uh, a night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the kind of shit that you say to comedians. Yeah. That's the kind of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck. Okay, so you um you point the camera at yourself yep. and you learned okay, this is the experience that I get about being honest with yes. the camera. That's that's the hardest part, being honest with the camera because it's only it's not even like your classmates doing a documentary about you, it's just you doing a documentary about yourself. Yeah. How uh, where where do, do I draw draw the line from private life to personal life? Mm. Uh, and how honest am I going to be? How much acting should I uh, uh, put into it? Um, it? It was hard. Yeah, it I can hard. imagine. Uh, yeah. And I kind of cheated myself through it with adding like uh, humor to it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what I also found out is that if you're doing like uh, humoristic things about yourself in a documentary kind of way, you expose yourself uh, you are much more vulnerable mm. because people see when you're doing humor to to uh, to uh, to um, kind of distance yourself to yourself yeah and that's that can be so much more vulnerable than being vulnerable yeah i know what you mean because yeah. people know yeah they know what they know what you're doing yeah 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 definitely so i'm guilty of that yeah i think a lot of people are guilty mm. of that yeah man recently uh, i found out that my mom has cancer 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And uh, it, it's breast cancer. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then, like, when she was talking to me about it, like, I just couldn't stop making jokes. No. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> and, and, then I, and then my sister goes, hey, this isn't a fucking comedy show. No, like, you're, no, you know, no, I no. understand what you're doing. Like, yeah. you're trying to be, like, you're trying to laugh it off as a way to protect your mm. sadness. Mm. Uh, but uh, this is serious. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, fuck, it is serious. Yeah. You know, I was like, just, oh, you're going to lose the tit. You better get calm on it for, you know, <laughs> like, just stupid <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? But it was my way of dealing yes. with this like traumatic uh, information yes. that I'd just been given. Mm. Um, so it was, uh, and, but, and, and like t t to your point, that's what they knew I was doing. Yes. They, they, they picked up on that. Yep. And they go, we, we can tell that you're upset by mm. this. Mm. And, we understand, but drop the jokes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, something that, like, you know, I experienced about mm. that. Mm. Yeah. But uh, just so everybody knows, I think she's going to be okay. So, you know, I mean, I think that's, that's good. Yeah. The prognosis is good. Yeah. It looks positive. You know, you got to, I guess you got to, like, remove part of the cancer cells yep. and uh, treat it with, you know, radiation or chemotherapy or yep. whatever ends up happening. But uh, I think, you know, things are going to be okay. You know, knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of cancer in Australia now. Really? Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah, because of the ozone layer. Okay. You know, it's so hot there. Yeah. And I don't know why this happens, but the hole in the ozone layer forms in the Southern Hemisphere. So okay. you could be polluting in like North America or the Northern Hemisphere, like yeah. around China, you know, these big industrial cities where you look at like a picture of Beijing and it's just fucking smoke everywhere. Mm. But for some reason, the hole that actually forms is over like the Antarctic and yeah. New Zealand and then Australia. Yeah. Dude, you would fucking hate being in Australia with, <laughs> with your skin complexion. Yeah. You're, you're going to melt. I had one week in Spain this summer and I was like, I, my feet were like swollen <laughs> because of the heat. <laughs> you got swollen feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Where, whereabouts in Spain were you? I was in uh, Mallorca. Ah, classic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah classic student, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the boys. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Was that the. Oh, yeah, I think you, you might have mentioned that because I asked you whether you could do a spot and you're like oh i'm on holiday yeah i yeah. think that was yeah that was at the time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like fuck it cancel that trip bro <laughs> come back to the corner we need you <laughs> are you a big traveler do you like uh you know exploring new parts of um, the world or? and not like uh, and not on my own uh, uh i don't um, initiate it mm. but my girlfriend is really fond of it yeah so she has made me uh, like it more yeah, uh, like uh, the first gift she ever gave me was a trip to Rome, ah. and we went there, and I was like, uh, "Oh, this, this is my city." Yeah, <laughs> nice. And then we went the second time, and uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, and uh, yeah, I really love Rome, and we, uh, and this year I've been traveling a lot, uh, so I've been to I've been to Dublin. Nice with a buddy. Yeah, uh, that was a good. It's like when you go with a buddy, you can go anywhere. Yeah, and it's good. It's a good time. But yeah. I went there. I saw a comedy show, a stand-up show. Was it with Doug Stanhope? Uh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But uh, uh, I guess I guess he is a regular at that club. I think. Mm. Um, but I saw so I, I and and it really like, oh shit! This is this is uh, this is another level. Really? Yeah. Was it local Irish guys? Yes. They're funny, man. Yeah, they're the really Irish funny. Are funny. Yeah, yeah. And they they just uh, uh, only problem I had was was that they amped up the mic so much it mm. was like uh, busted uh, yeah. the speakers and stuff. But uh, it was really funny. Uh, I was like, I, I I went there hoping to get a uh, get an open mic. Yeah. Uh, but then I saw like the first act and I was like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> so good, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was in Berlin this summer. Yeah. And I did an open mic uh, at the at an English speaking uh, club. Perfect. Uh, and I did like uh, I did like uh, a lot of like non non verbal uh, jokes. Yeah. I did like a lot of body like clown stuff. Mm. Uh, and it was it was really fun. And, and now my goal is to like every city I go to, I must uh, at least try to get an open mic. That's a good goal. Yeah, I have the same goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean. <clears throat> If I'm going traveling, there's two things that I want to do. I want to generally do jujitsu. 
Yeah. And meet some jujitsu guys. Mm. And I want to do stand up comedy. Yeah. 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 And I haven't been doing that much travel because of, you know, the pandemic and everything. Yeah. But I did make it to Iceland uh, okay. in 2020, I think, or 2021. Yeah. And I got in contact with the local comedians there. Yeah. And man, it was amazing. They yeah. put me on the lineup. Yeah, nice. it was like a proper show, and yeah. I got to perform there, and it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. And then the hang afterwards was amazing. Mm. Yeah. Did you just write to the club, or how did you get in contact uh, with it? I just did some research and found out. I, it was the day we got there. Mm. So uh, in the morning, I was like, okay, are there any uh, comedy, uh, comedy clubs? Yes, it's uh, one, and it has a show tonight, and it's uh, uh, names in a hat uh, kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. went there. I met the, the other ones who were putting their names in the hat. Uh, was talking to them a little bit, and uh, uh, and I got pulled up from the hat and uh, did. I did. I think I did four minutes. Yeah. Uh, before I was uh, getting the flash. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. So it's like that. You're <laughs> like, just keep going until you see the light. Yeah. Huh. Um, but uh, it's a it's a different game outside of Norway because everyone is a little bit more hostile. The audience? Uh, no, oh. like the comedians. Really? I think. Yeah. Shit. Uh, like the MC was like really strict on time and, uh, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the MCs are pretty liberal in Oslo. Yeah. Or at least in Norway, you know what I mean? Like, um, but I kind of like the idea of sticking to a strict time schedule. Yeah, me too. Um, Sometimes it's a bit of a downer if you're supposed to do 10 minutes and, you know, somebody goes on and does like fucking 22. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, you kind of burn the audience out a little bit. And, yeah. You know, the show's going to drag on. And especially if you're like headlining, if you're the, at the end and then like maybe the show's supposed to finish at like 10 o'clock and yes. you get on stage at like 1030. Yeah. And the audience is, they're done with comedy for that night. They're done. Yeah. They're, they're burned out. Yeah. But that's what I learned by doing the corner because mm. people would drop in and I would just give so many people spots. Like, yeah. you want a spot? Fuck yeah. Good to see you. Mm. Thanks for coming. Here's a mm. spot. Do five. And then sometimes I'd say, here's five. And they're on stage for 15 minutes. Yeah. And I do that twice. And now the headline is like, you know, people are leaving. Yeah. You know, they've got shit to do. Yeah. So now I, I try to keep it pretty strict. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not on the uh, lineup, mm. Maybe if you promise to do five minutes, yeah. like you really just five minutes, man, five is five, then then yeah, sure, I'll, I'll give it up in my Wh spot. What what uh, what uh, clubs do you run now? Do you run the corner? Yeah, so we'd have the corner, yeah, and then we do a show once a month at Skatten in Toyen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, I was asked to do that, but I couldn't. Uh, yeah, do that. well, we were doing it every month, so yeah. if you, next time if you have the chance, yeah, yeah, it's, absolutely, uh, I think you'd enjoy it. Yeah. The first time we did Scotland was at the end of the Crush tour. Yeah. And it was fucking packed. <laughs> it was we're grabbing chairs from outside and ripping out tables and yeah. I think we we sold like maybe 35 or 40 tickets or whatever it was and maybe there was close to like 100 people there. Yeah. Yeah. So and you guys all had done like how many shows did you do in total at the uh, at the tour? I don't know, man. Somewhere between fifteen and twenty. Yeah, like and you had all that experience, and then you've, s and it not in Oslo. Yeah, and then you come to an Oslo, who is a, a, a town much more like uh, capable of receiving comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they ate oh. it up. Yeah. You know when you go on stage sometimes, and it doesn't matter what you say. Yeah. And they just like, <laughs> ha ha ha, with like they just fucking eat it up. Yeah. It was like that. I was the MC, and uh, we had the you know the rest of the rest of the guys. Mm. And like everybody killed, yeah. Like everybody killed. It was like second degree murder, oh, just yeah. fucking oh, yeah. bam, bam. And every yeah. joke hit, and the you know man, like, and you know we we did like a lot of tough spots on that tour. Yeah, we did some spots that were amazing, and we mm. did some spots that were tough, and it just all prepared us for when uh, everything was perfect. You know, when the stars all aligned, yes. and the audience is packed, and it's a good room, and everything is good. It's a cakewalk. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's easy, easy, easy. Yeah. That's kind of what I think, uh, you know, I mean, that's the advantage of like when it comes to organizing something. Like yeah. if you're, I mean, uh, from what I learned, like the comedy part is super important, mm. obviously, mm. but the organizing part yes. is equally as important. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Having a good dialogue with the venue, mm. making sure the promo is good, making yeah. sure like the room is uh, set the right way with the chairs and all that sort of shit. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't, if you fuck up the organizing part, yes. you're gonna fuck up the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah, I re feel really sorry for uh, for uh, Muhammad Basifir. 
Mm. He was doing the Lucka stand-up thing. Yeah. And he, he had one venue at first, but mm. the communication was just terrible. Yeah. Uh, uh, but now he has uh, he, ha- he does Brewdog. Yeah. Like... Uh, Every other Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. I, I think I'm doing it next uh, next time he's doing it. Yeah. Uh, sometime in October. Yeah. Have you done that? No, uh, I haven't. No. I haven't. No. Yeah, actually, he's going to be one of my next guests on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, I love him. So much love in his body. Dude, uh, yeah. And have you seen the the, um, the comedy uh, series? No, but I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm yeah. going to watch it before he comes on. Oh, it's on. so funny. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, so good to see like someone really uh, embracing the short form uh, sketch comedy yes. uh, in that way. Yeah, because it's uh, like it's kind of situational based. Yes. Right? Like with uh, Kashten as the door security guard yeah and then every episode it's just n- new adventures yeah and, wha- and they just they don't they don't uh I don't, they don't promote themselves as much as they give space for other comedies to shine on their show and that's that's an ability uh, uh that i really respect yeah i got you so like say for if kashton is playing the security guard yeah he'll give space to whoever's the uh guy in the line yes if it's galtar or yes. alexander bastinson or whoever the fuck it is yeah man you know like that's what i learned from doing sketches mm. it's like if you have let's just say you and me are doing a sketch yeah. right let's just say it's a job interview yeah let's say i'm interviewing you and let's say like you have all of these bizarre characteristics. Yeah. I can't also have bizarre characteristics. No. I need to be the one that's reacting to your bizarreness. Yes. You can't have two people both being zany and nutty. No. You know, you need to let the other person shine. Yeah. And and you'll make them shine more if you're not as fucked up as them. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's uh, that's really like uh, admirable. Yeah. For comics to to be able to uh, uh, serve mm. without uh, f- uh, without like um, without like expecting uh, you to serve back to them. Gotcha. The, yeah. 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 And I'm not saying that uh, Kashten and Mohammed uh, are not funny in that show. They are really fucking funny. But uh, yeah, they uh, they they let other people shine too. Yeah. yeah. You need to do that. Yeah. You need to do it. It's for the you know it makes the show better. Yeah. You just got to do whatever makes the show better. Yeah. Yeah, you have you done many comedy sketches like on video? Um, uh, no, I did. Like, uh, we did a spin-off of that uh, um, uh, family uh, sitcom. Mm. Uh, me and uh, me and another guy. Uh, but it's like it's uh, the 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 mole your face is like you're fourteen, tw- uh, twelve year olds. Yeah. So uh, it's sketches, but it's like uh, it's. Uh, it's dimmed down gotcha. for the audience, but uh, I've done like yeah some uh, we did made some for the review, mm. uh, 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 but uh, I I have yet to like uh, really let's do one. Yes, you want to do, do one? one? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Absolutely, we'll figure something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love doing them, man. Yeah, I love doing them. I mean, it requires a little bit of uh, you know effort. Yeah. But it's worth it. Mm. You know what I mean? When you make something. And you know, all the comedy sketches that I've done in the past, and like I got a bunch of them on like Instagram and shit like that. Yeah. It's, it's just been me basically like without knowing that many comedians. Yeah. And now that I know like fucking so many comedians, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like just sitting down and figuring out an idea yeah, and yeah, then yeah. delivering on it. Yeah. I think it's going to be so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, me and Gaut are like sort of doing it uh, at uh, making Gaut a show. Yeah, uh, I think that's. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that because I th- that's gonna be really fucking hilarious. Is that a video series? Yes. So it's like a talk show. It's a ten minute talk show. Like yeah, each episode is ten minutes. And we got like uh, some profiled guests, like uh, uh, politicians there. We got some uh, singers, uh, artists there, and stuff. It's gonna be really fun. Okay, so it's like in a studio setting or yes. something like that. And is this something studio. that you guys are just making, or is it like with a production company? Or so it's together, t- together with a uh, production company called Munter, mm-hmm. uh, which is a uh, new, newly started uh, young guys uh, having it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, studio, uh, two guests per episode. Yeah, I'm the sidekick. Yeah, uh, got the lead sit, and uh, yeah, it's he's uh, so funny. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's so funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah, holy shit! And are there any episodes available yet? Or are you gonna finish the whole season and mm. then release them? 
I'm gonna release them in January, February, February, I think. Uh, okay. But uh, f- uh, we're gonna uh, shoot some uh, uh, inslag. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then we're gonna edit it all together, or the co- production company is gonna edit it, and then they will uh, they are gonna try to sell it to like NRK and stuff. Uh, but uh, we rely on putting it on YouTube. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. I think YouTube is such a good platform. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Are you releasing? Do you have a lot of clips and stuff of you performing, uh, like on social media? No, I, I'm. That, that's the thing that I want to get better at, is like filming and and uh, releasing clips. But yeah. um, uh, it's because uh, one like uh, one argument is that you don't want to uh, give out your comedy, like, but. You do a lot of improv on stage, you know, and then and, and that's the thing that people want to see, I think. Mm. Uh, so uh, I can get, uh, I think I can, can get better at that. Yeah. Just making sure that you have the camera set up yeah. and that you're going, okay, I'm going to see what I can get out of this. Yeah. Man, I, um, I released one, cl- I've, I've, re- I've put out like one clip. Yeah. Right. And, so many people saw yeah, it. Yeah, the Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, a yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't yeah, that yeah. good? That's fucking. That's great. a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good one. But so many people that I didn't even really know came mm. up to me and told me that they saw it. You yeah. know, like uh, fucking parents in my kids' barn. Yeah, they go, "Hey, do you do comedy? Do you <laughs> saw that Handmaid's bit? It was killer." Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards the idea of. I'm. I don't. I'm. I think what I'm probably going to start doing is just you know burning bits online. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so because it's that, like that gives you a motivation to write new material as well. Exactly. But uh, do you have a goal? Like, do you want to ever put on, uh, make a solo show? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think you have to have that as a goal. How how far are you from uh, from uh, from that? Dude, I don't know. I'm probably like a good. Uh, I don't know. I could probably say maybe. Six to six to twelve months. Yeah, I would say. Really? Yeah, That's I think so. Exciting. Yeah, I th- I think I could probably have like a pretty dope solo show. In, let's say a year. Yeah. Let's say this time next year I can yeah. have a fucking solo. Or or, and this is an idea I'm kind of toying around with. You know, after having uh, Panilla Harland in as a guest when she did the Fringe Festival. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. Now yeah, we're yeah. talking. Imagine going to Edinburgh, yeah. doing your solo show every yes. night for a month. Yeah. I think she did like fucking 28 shows or something. Shit. Right? Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know whether I'm going to do like the Fringe Festival, but let's just say that I have something ready by that time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be dope. Mm. I actually had this idea of like, you know, when I turned 40 or whatever the fuck it was, sort of like what Lieben did. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Has he, uh, has he done it now? He did it on Friday. Okay. Yeah, so he did 40 minutes for his 40th birthday. Yeah. Yeah, that's a solo show. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think that, like, what my idea was, and I guess, you know, it's pretty similar to Lieben's, is, like, if I am having a birthday or want to celebrate something, mm. yeah, like, don't 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 buy me anything. I don't want no. anything. But, like, okay, we're going to rent this space. Tickets are 200 kroners. Yeah. Come check it out. We're going to have a show. And then afterwards, there's a party. Mm. Right, isn't that like a fucking good way that to celebrate? That sounds like a really good idea. Yep. Yeah, I think so. And you know, the thing is, like, probably like you as well. You have so many friends, right, yeah. that are interested in you as a person, yes. that love you, and they just can't make it to all the shows that no, you can do. No. They can come here, they can come there, mm. you know, every now and again. But if you say this is the one, yes, this is the one. Okay, I'm gonna send send out the invite to a thousand people. Mm. Who can come? Mm. Oh, it's your birthday. And this is what you want? Yeah. You want a, our present to you <laughs> yeah. is this show? And then we get to party afterwards? Yeah. That's perfect. Uh. Yeah. And the good thing about that is everybody can do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like your friends are your friends and my friends are my friends. Mm. And you know what I mean? Like you could do a fucking solo show for your birthday. And so can Lieben. And so mm. can I. And so can Alexander Erkland. And so yeah. can whoever. So I think it's a kind of good, a good way to do it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that like uh, one of the things that I want to definitely build up towards is doing like, you know, a 45 minute solo show yeah. and then filming it and just putting it on YouTube. Yeah. Right. Isn't that kind of good? Yeah. 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 I, I, it's just, I, uh, I can't like 
I've watched so many uh, solo shows mm. on YouTube mm. that I uh, with people I don't know who, uh, who I, I have no idea who they were before. I like I'm yeah, it's so, it's such a good training to just watch every uh, watch comedians you don't know do a special. I agree. Yeah, yeah, and you often very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I've watched so many random solo shows I can't even remember their fucking names. No, no. And I'm like, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was good. I was uh, this summer. I was doing a Christian uh, camp uh, performance, mm. uh, and on the way there, on the bus, I watched like a, a Christian comics special. Yep, and it was so good, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Norwegian guy? No, uh, American guy. Yeah, he was like doing it in a church. Uh, oh. It was like it, it. I think it was maybe like the best like uh, writing job I've ever seen on stage because it, it the um, the ramifications are so like you can't swear, uh, you can't talk about this. But there's a gray area there that's so fun to play with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I learned a lot about uh, 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 of watching that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I bet, man. How about you? What's uh, you, you do you want to do a solo show? Oh, definitely. Um, Good answer. That's yeah. the right answer. I think I want to do like before, like doing an uh, like forty five minutes or an hour by myself. I think I want to do like uh, put up a solo show that's uh, that's a club uh, night with me as an MC. Uh, 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 presenting characters and me going off the stage and coming on the stage as a character fun yeah yeah i think i mean that's that's like my goal for the next for, for the summer salt uh humor uh, festival oh wow yeah i think uh, i want to do that uh, yeah. how many characters would you do uh four I okay think. and it's like 10 12 minutes each kind yeah. of thing yeah. yeah huh have you got the characters figured out i got two figured out let me guess is one of them trim? Yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> the course. yoga instructor. He's got a close. Yeah, is he close. closing? Yeah. Oh, what a beast. That's good. Yeah. I think that'll be a fun show. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm going to be there. Yeah, you yeah. should. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. Shit. Nah, man. I think like, uh, I think this, I think, how did you come up with trim? Like, how the fuck? Just tell people who trim is. Yeah, so trim is, uh, uh, trim, uh, trim Shin is, uh, uh, he's my uh, uh, fictional twin brother. Yep. Uh, who wants to be an actor, and uh, but he's really nervous and he's really insecure. But he like covers it all up with like extreme cocky uh, <laughs> behavior, and it doesn't work. You you see it through it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I just uh, I have so much love for him, and uh, I did uh, I did like a solo show for him this summer. <laughs> I did like thirty minutes with him uh, being in uh, being a yoga instructor. Uh, because he uh, he in the fictional world of him, he was um, uh, considered to be uh, have to get a role as a yoga instructor in the series. Uh, so he wanted to do like uh, a yoga show to like in method act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he's it's just so much vulnerability and uh, love and uh, like yeah I, I don't know I just uh, just really like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he any good at yoga? No. <laughs> <laughs> did you do that at Salt? Yeah. How did that go? Uh, it went good. It's like the first show was like there were like four tickets uh, sold. Yeah. Uh, and they showed up, uh, but there were also like five guys in the uh, in the sauna who didn't buy tickets. They were just being there. To oh, you did it in a sauna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot yoga. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! So the heat was turned up, uh, and the five guys who didn't buy tickets, they didn't know what the fuck they were in for. <laughs> <laughs> they just <laughs> 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 suddenly, like this insecure <laughs> uh. guy came in and he started doing. Uh, I did that show and uh, it went. Uh, but uh, but I came up with him because we had a, a assignment in school uh, of making uh, uh, an entertainment. Um, uh, I know we we could uh, it was like uh, primarily for YouTube like uh, make content for YouTube yeah 
uh, and then uh, we had the idea of uh, like uh, self tapes, like the tapes people send in to productions, uh, production companies and yeah, stuff for casting. Yeah, uh, the ones who didn't get the part. Ah, That's like the premise. So yeah. we just uh, we just uh, played different characters that were bad at oh, acting and <laughs> and stuff. And we like uh, uh, three characters in one episode, and we made three episodes. Mm. And Trim was one of those characters. And uh, from there on, it was like, yeah, this is I can I can like improvise with him so much, and yeah. uh, I feel like really comfortable being him. Yeah, 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 yeah. D isn't it good when you give birth to a character? Yeah, you know when you create somebody <laughs> yeah. and you're like, oh shit, this guy has a few. Future. yeah 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 holy <laughs> shit that's good and, and what kind of like you know one of the things that like i really love about characters mm. is that they have so many flaws yes which you can just exaggerate mm. so do you look for any particular flaws that you think you can extract a lot of comedy out of uh yeah i i think uh, like um uh uh, that like I love like people watching and stuff. That's yeah. that's uh that's a uh, I love it. Uh, and uh, and it's like uh, I think a lot of comics would say that uh, and mean it. Uh, and uh, uh, and it's uh, I think it's the the contrast in people is the the the, the thing that I like most. Mm. Like the for Trim exa for example, he's he's insecure but he's cocky. Yeah, and that contrast is what it brings him to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it like yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Uh, um, flaws like uh, like narcissism. Yeah, for example, absolutely. Right? Narcissism as a flaw where yeah. you can extract out. Yeah, yeah. You know, like man, I I think about a lot of weird shit, and one of the weird things that I was thinking about was like. For some reason, like the idea of a fucking uh, pickup artist, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, and I thought of you. I thought, <laughs> like, who could play a pickup artist, <laughs> right? In like the most hilarious way. Yeah. You. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought, oh my god, what a character. Yeah. What a character to play. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can just drag out so many different situations yeah. with that fucking guy yeah. that's just like you know inappropriate yeah. or he just doesn't understand that his techniques don't work yeah and he's maybe he's like coaching a bunch of incels mm. you know you can mm. get a bunch of comedians to play roles where like you know like you're like teaching people how to pick people yeah. up and doing like street scenes you know where we you, you walk up to these women like let me show you how it's done yeah and you know you try to do like some yeah. unsuccessful negging and the chicks are just not into it you're like yeah that's how it's done boys yeah. you know what i mean shit yeah, like yeah, that yeah, those yeah, kind yeah, of flaws yeah, yeah. where yeah. you like you find that flaw yeah. and you go let's milk it mm, let's mm. fucking milk it all the way yeah yeah you know like when you watch the office like the english version of the office yes. and what's his name david brent yeah and he like he just thinks that he's like the fucking yeah. i'm not really a boss i'm more of a mentor <laughs> and he's a total moron you know what i mean like that shit yeah. cracks me up yeah, all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah flaws in people are hilarious yeah because everybody has them yes and I think like the, the uh, the uh, like, whenever a character teaches so uh, anybody else about a thing they don't really know about, yeah. that's that's the funniest shit it's ever. The funniest shit. Yeah. Like Trim being a yoga instructor. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, motherfucker. <laughs> Let me see your downward dog. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit, man. Listen, dude. I, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I, I just want to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. Mm. As a performer, mm. you fucking kill me. You murder, and I love seeing you perform. Mm. And I want you to know that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And I love it when we do comedy together. Yeah. And I can't wait to do a comedy sketch with you. No. Oh. And I think it's going to be fun as fuck. <laughs> okay. We'll, 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 we'll just shoot something, and we'll just drop it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for being a guest, brother. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yep. All right, see you later, everybody. See you later. Mwah! Mm -hmm.